Hi guys, Gabi from UiPath Hacks here. Rethrow is probably one of the less used activities in UiPath, and rightly so, but there are times when it comes in handy. In this video, I will explain what it does, how it differs from its sister activity, Throw, and some examples of when you could use it. Exception handling is um, a core building block of many processes, no matter how simple the process. Using a framework comes already with a lot of pre-built exception handling, but regardless if you add your own custom one or if you rely mainly on the framework's exception handling, you will notice quickly that the exception handling is done on different levels. So you will often have parent and child levels. In this environment, you could design your exception handling in such a way that it avoids duplicating the catch activities and rather reroutes the exception to the right level that should deal with it, rather than try to rebuild the same logic in every try-catch block. So I have a very simple um, workflow here. I have two try-catch activities. I've named the first one parent and the second one child so it would be easier to distinguish between them. And we have here in the data folder an Excel file with house prices. So our process now would attempt to, to open this file and then read the information inside the first sheet. So I've built an exception handling around that to deal with a situation when the file doesn't exist or it's being locked by another process. This workflow is using the read range activity and um, this activity requires the Excel to be closed or not open or in use by another process. And uh, if it is, then it will throw an input output exception. So if we don't use here any exception handling, we will just get uh, an error and the process will stop. Now I've wrapped this read range inside a first try catch called a child try catch. And I have here in the catch an IO exception defined and I have a log message. And then we will see later what happens if we will um, use a throw or a rethrow. Yeah? And in the parent try catch, we have two catches. One is an IO exception and another is a business rule exception. Yeah? So let's just run this for now and see what's happening. If we don't use any throw and any rethrow, we get the log message Excel is locked by another process. So actually inside this IO exception catch of the child, we got this log message. So basically the exception was handled at the child level. Now let's see what's happening if we uncomment the throw. And in the throw, we have here a parameter. So when does it make sense to use the throw? A throw basically throws a new exception. Uh, usually, you will use it if you need to raise a business or exception. A new catch block should be defined for this new exception type. So, we have now business or exception. That's the reason why the parent try catch block has also here a section for the business or exception. And it will just, in this case, it will just um, uh, log a message and then probably in a real life scenario, maybe send an email to somebody from, to, to an admin or somebody from the data team that they should check this file. So if we will just run it like this with the throw, we expect the child to have dealt with this, um, with this error because we have the Excel open. And then after logging message, then throw the error uh, up to the parent. So let's run it. So we have the log from the child error message and then we have the log from the parent uh, exception handling. In, so, it's, uh, so basically the parent has caught the business or exception. So basically in this case, we wanted the child to throw the exception to the higher level because the higher level had already a routine for managing business or exceptions. Now let's see what's happening if we would um, use the rethrow. So I'll comment this one and I will uncomment the rethrow. 
you see the rift row has no uh, exception parameter in, in, in the properties panel. Basically, it's rethrowing the same exception that occurred to the higher level. So we have a chance in the child to do something first. In, the, in our case, we just log a message. And then the same exception would be sent up to the parent because the parent would probably have a bit more handling here. And um, yeah, in this case, the parent, again, uh, might, might have some logic here, maybe if then logic or, or uh, some user interaction in this case um, or wh whatever else. But in our case, we just have a log message here, just pointing out that we've got uh, an IO exception. And then a message box, this could have been something like a task uh, given to a user and the process will then continue after the user has fixed the um, error. But we just have an alert here just to make it clear that uh, the parent has caught the same exception and is handling it. So let's run. And we have the message box here and we see also the log message from the parent. So basically um, this is how we should use throw and rethrow. So the main difference between them is that the throw activity is throwing a new exception, whereas the rethrow is just referring uh, to the higher level the same exception. So when do we want to use each of them? Uh, it's clear that we have different exceptions here. Uh, if it's a business issue, we would probably want to use throw just to have a, a separate handling of that type of issues. And um, normally, if we are using uh, frameworks um, and multiple uh, workflows, it's very often the case that uh, in a small workflow, we might encounter an exception, but we don't want to deal with it there and build all the logic there. We might have the logic built already in the framework or in the parent workflow, which has called this the child workflow. So for, for this purpose, to keep everything, all the logic in one place, it comes very handy to use throw and rethrow to basically escalate the issue to the higher level. So if you think about uh, a team uh, in your uh, work environment, where we have team members and maybe a manager of the team, team members would deal with some exceptions themselves, but some type of issues, uh, they wanna escalate to their managers and the manager will take care of it. And it's the same here. Let's say the, the child workflow is a team member and when um, it can't deal with, with something, he can just catch it and then um, throw it or rethrow it back to the upper level that has all the logic in place to deal with it. So that's pretty much it. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button. If you want to support my work and uh, be notified of future uh, URPAT hacks, tips and tricks and tutorials, please also subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and have a great day.